Whenever we think about a specific country, a few things come to mind, at least for me. Their flag, their geographic location, but also their capital city. When I think of the UK, my mind jumps to London, Germany to Berlin, Russia to Moscow, and France to Paris. And I think this is because the capital is usually the place that most commonly represents the country. It's where the majority of tourists go to sometimes, where the majority of people live in some cases, etc. Although that isn't always the case. And with some countries, the capital city not only isn't the most relevant, but it also isn't the first that comes to mind when we think about that specific nation. With the USA, most people think about New York or LA instead of Washington DC. With Brazil, Rio de Janeiro or Sao Paulo instead of Brasilia. Curiously, both cases of federal states with a capital district. So more than one city can claim their role as the main city of the country. However, there's a few cases where more than one city can also claim to be the country's capital, usually because governmental institutions are separated, but also for some other reasons. The most odd being the historical examples I'll mention in the end, like British India having a summer and winter capital, Simla and Calcutta slash Delhi respectively. Worldwide, there are 17 countries which have two capital cities instead of one, and one that actually has three. In some cases, one city is the capital for some purposes and one or more for others without any being considered an official single capital. There are also cases where there is a single legally defined capital, but one or more other cities operate as the seat of some or all parts of the government. While those cases are not technically multiple capital countries, in practice, the situation is very similar, so I included them on this list of a few examples of these 17 countries. So in this video, I'm going to do the following show you some of the countries worldwide which have more than one capital, tell you what each of the capitals does, and when possible, explain why that is so. Starting with the one on the thumbnail, Czechia. Apparently, according to Wikipedia and some other sources, the Czech Republic has two different capitals. Prague, the most well-known, and the city we usually associate with the country being the official capital, used for the seat of the national administrative and legislative bodies, and Brno, which is the seat of the national judiciary bodies, meaning the Supreme Court, at least which is located in this Moravian city. Brno is also Czechia's second largest city behind Prague. It's interesting because the relationship between these two cities dates back a long time. And maybe that's the reason why this situation takes place today. In the mid 11th century, Moravia was divided into three separate territories. Each had its own ruler, but subordinated to the Bohemian ruler in Prague. These seats of these rulers, and thus the capitals of these territories, were the castles and towns of Brno, Olomouc, and Znoimo. After this, the Margraviate of Moravia was formed, although still under the rule of the Bohemian crown, but uniting the three regions, and the capital city of it was set in Brno. So we can understand that this city has an important role in the history of the territory, and since the old region of Moravia is now a part of Czechia, being fully united to it, it makes sense that the heirs of Bohemia would want to grant due importance to the capital of Moravia's heirs. How bad was my pronunciation of Brno, by the way? Also in Europe, the Netherlands. Amsterdam is the official capital under the Dutch constitution. However, it is in The Hague that the seat of government exists. The Netherlands' main governing bodies, including the state's general, executive branch, and supreme court, have been located in this city for centuries. I looked this up and found some somewhat angry Dutch people pointing out they do not have two capitals, but I guess this depends on how you define a capital. And for the purpose of this video, I'm using the definition of cities, which are officially determined to be capitals, plus those where important seats of government exist. In the case of the Netherlands, it seems that the origin of this capital confusion goes back to the Middle Ages. Back then, the Hague was the seat of government for the Counts of Holland. Amsterdam, on the other hand, was a center of trade, commerce, finance and culture. As the Netherlands united into a single country, the Hague remained the government location, but Amsterdam was always viewed as its key and most important city, and that somewhat remains until today. The Hague is the government center, and Amsterdam is the economic and cultural one. 
as well as the official capital. Further south, Montenegro. Montenegro has Podgorica as their official capital. However, it is a little to the west in Setinje that another important institution is located, the seat of the president. Apparently, this is because throughout Montenegro's history, Setinje had been the official capital. It was always, or at least for most of the time, the main city of the region in this small Balkan nation. In a piece about the topic, it says, grand mansions and museums testified to Setinje's years as a seat of power in the country, and the president's official residence is still in the city's empire-style blue palace. After the Second World War, Setinje is said to have lost its prominence to the new city of Podgorica, and the first is now regarded as the old royal capital. The president is seated in Setinje and the government is seated in Podgorica. However, it's not only the royal capital which is old. Podgorica has also existed and has been an important place throughout history. Known as Birzinium in Roman times, the city morphed into Slavic Ribnica and Titograd before being renamed to what it is now. All the way to the south, South Africa. Unlike most of the cases on this video where there is an official capital, but also other important cities which hold seats of government, South Africa is amongst a minority of countries that does not have an official single capital. Instead, they have three. One for each branch of government. Pretoria is the administrative capital, Cape Town, legislative, and Bloemenfontein is the judicial capital. In Pretoria, which by the way might apparently change back to its original name of Chuan, we can find the executive branches of government. In Cape Town is the parliament, and in Bloemfontein is the home of the Supreme Court. A fun fact is that this city was the birthplace of amazing author J.R.R. Tolkien. So why do they have three capital cities? It has to do with their transition from a British colony to an independent nation, while Canada or Australia remained federations, and so each previous colonial province kept some autonomy, South Africa, which consisted of four British colonies, Cape Province, Natal, the Orange River Colony, and Transvaal, became a single unitary state. And so, as compensation for this loss of autonomy, they decided to divide the central government between them. But this whole situation might change soon. In 2016, their president called on parliament to consider consolidating the capitals, saying it's not practical to keep capitals in both Cape Town and Pretoria as they are located on opposite ends of the country, and maintaining both of them gives them an unnecessary expense. Within South Africa, Iswatini. This is an interesting case. It has two capitals, simply because one is for the government and the other for the king. Mbane is where the government operates, but the king holds his office in Lobamba, the royal capital. Then up north, Western Sahara. This one has to do with the fact that the self-proclaimed independent country of the region, the Sahrawi Republic, claims one city as their capital, Lyon. But since they don't have control of it, Morocco does, they have to effectively host their capital in another city, Tifariti. Moving to South America, Chile. Santiago and Valparaíso are the two capitals of Chile. Santiago is the one we usually see as the actual capital, being the seat of the national government and judicial bodies. But Valparaíso is also important, serving as the HQ for the national parliament. And it's interesting because the two cities are only 115 kilometers apart. However, they're really different, much like all of Chile's landscape. Santiago has as its background snowy mountains, while Valparaíso is closer to the shore and can see a sunset over the sands of the Pacific Ocean. We should attribute the title of capital to Santiago. It is the official capital since very early on. In 1810, it was there that the process of establishing the independence of Chile began, and the city immediately became the capital of the new nation. However, in modern times, a great number of government institutions moved to Valparaíso, like the National Customs Office, the National Fish Ministry, the Ministry of Culture, and the Barracks General of the Chilean Navy. The reason for the move apparently had to do with an attempt at decentralization. Next to it is Bolivia. When we think of Bolivia, we usually associate La Paz with being its capital, being the seat of the national executive, legislative, and electoral bodies. However, the official constitutional capital 
is Sucre, where the national judiciary is located. This is also because of its early history. In the early days of colonial rule, silver from the mines surrounding Sucre turned the mountain city into the most important place in the region, now known as Bolivia. At the time, it was called La Plata by the Spanish, and it was from it that they controlled a great deal of their South American territory. A while later, tin industry helped make La Paz a rival for economic and political power. It also has an impressive setting, being located around the snowy peaks of the Andes Mountains. It's also a location of incredible historical worth. The area had been the site of an Inca city, located on a major trading route where the Spanish arrived in 1535. In 1898, the city became the de facto seat of government, gaining more and more importance as the silver mines of Sucre became depleted and the tin industry of La Paz was growing. Oddly enough, neither of these two are the biggest city, a title that is held by Santa Cruz de la Sierra in Central America slash the Caribbean, Honduras. This is a pretty straightforward situation, but it's still one where two cities are technically both the capital. Tegucigalpa had been the capital of Honduras since 1880. However, around 1936, the Honduran constitution was changed to combine the capital of Tegucigalpa and its sister city of Comayaguela into one single central district. In 1982, when Honduras' current constitution was made, it was decided that the central district would serve as the capital, meaning that both cities now became part of the capital district. Finally, in Asia, Sri Lanka. The national and executive bodies of government are in Colombo, the old island capital which served as an important trade and economic center for natives, Portuguese, Dutch and British colonizers. And it is still there that the government and courts function. But the official capital is in, if I mispronounced other words, this one is going to be way worse. Sri Jayawardenepurakot, where the parliament meets. And lastly for this video, Malaysia. Kuala Lumpur is the national capital and the seat of the legislator and the official home of Malaysia's monarch. But for some reason that I couldn't find out, in 1995, the government started building another city for other parts of their offices in Putrajaya, which today serves as the home of the administrative center and the seat of the national judiciary. Essentially, the old capital is where the parliament and king live and work, and the new capital is where the government and justice system functions. There are also, like I mentioned, cases of countries which in recent history had two capitals at some point but don't anymore, like Serbia which from 2003 to 2006 had Belgrade as the government and legislative capital but Podgorica as the judicial one. We saw the example of Montenegro, so we know why that ended. I feel like a lot of these cases where parts of government are separated into different cities are kind of arguable as to whether or not they are cases of more than one capital city, especially because they seem somewhat arbitrary. There are countries where certain government institutions are spread across various cities and those don't make the list. But maybe it's because it's the top institution of each of the three powers, executive, legislative, and administrative, whose HQ is considered. So you would have to have the Supreme Court, the seat of government, and the national parliament in separate cities for us to consider more than one capital. Norway had two capitals for one day in 1940, when Amar joined Oslo, being the seat of parliament for a single day. Laos from 1947 to 1975 had an administrative capital for the government and a royal capital for the king. Or Georgia which had its official government capital in Tbilisi while the parliament was seated in Kutaisi from 2012 to 2018 amongst a few other examples throughout time. So those are some of the countries worldwide that have two capital cities and in the case of South Africa Three, allowing us to understand where this odd occurrence happens, the fact that apparently it's not that odd, and why it is the case in these specific nations. Thanks so much for watching the video, comment your opinions below, and subscribe if you want to catch future videos. I will see you next time for more general knowledge.